Thank you so much for inviting me onto your country, Auntie Alison. Could you please introduce yourself and who your people are? Oh, uh, thank you for coming here, love. M my name's Alison Hunt, and my people is Pijanjara tribe and Western Aranda. And what languages do you speak? I speak Pijanjara, Western Aranda, Western Lurija, Yangonjara, and understand other languages as well. Are your languages widely spoken in your communities? Yes, it is. On Thursday, November the 2nd, after the announcement of the Uluru climb closure, you were on radio talkback with ABC Alice Springs and you publicly asked that the name Uluru Statement from the Heart not be used. Why are you asking that? Well, I was told by my elders and at the board meeting here to talk to the radio to get the message out there to take the name off the Uluru Statement of the Heart and, 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 and get it out of there and people have to find their own name, not using Uluru. Why is that? Because this place here, it's a sacred, sacred rock to all animal people, the Aboriginal nation of the land. So that's why you gotta have proper protocols and you gotta have proper consultations with the people and also you have to be given permission and consent in order to, to to use the land and this rock is very very sacred important place to us to honor people of the land so the name of the referendum council convention, which was the First Nations Convention, has been widely used across Australia as Uluru Talks. Now you've said it wasn't about the debate on constitutional recognition and reform, it's actually about cultural support for the Anwil people and the use of the name of Uluru. Can you just share a bit more about what would have to be done if that name, the name of Uluru, would be used well, to refer to a statement on constitutional recognition? I think I've already made a, a statement to ABC Radio um, not to use it and that was told by my tribal elders that they have to look for another name and I've also spoke to one of the um, um, one of the members and when she found me and I said you have to take it off. All right. Can we take it back to the First Nations Convention at Yulara for that final meeting there? What was your understanding of the consultation for the meeting to be held on country at Yulara? Well, to my knowledge, there hasn't been really a proper consultation. I've never seen, I travel, I travel the land, the Peterman area, and I, I haven't yet seen all them years that they say that they had consultations with the people. I haven't seen that. And I know people were saying, we didn't see anybody come and sit down under the tree and tell us about it, what, they're gonna, what their vision is, or a story about what they're going to do. So it was all done. It, it was just like, you know, we talk about government making fast decisions without consultation, well, this what happened here. So in the meetings, was there a process of request to use the name Uluru for that statement, from your understanding? Well, I didn't hear that, and I was part of the meeting, um, helping with the um, mediation and chairing the meeting, so I didn't hear that name getting raised in there. So you were seen on TV to be standing with the referendum council when people from that meeting walked out who were against constitutional recognition. 
what happened in that meeting that led to the walkout? Well, it was very sad to see. There was a lot of division, there was a lot of argument, there was a lot of debate, and and not talking nicely to about the vision or where to from here, but screaming at each other. It it, it was it was very childish meeting. I'm sorry to say that. How did it make you and your people who had attended the meeting feel to have that problem come onto country? Well, I told them that in the conference, this is a sacred land. Even Voyages is a sacred land for Anangwa people because of the Jukurba that goes through there, women's dreaming. So everywhere around here, National Park, it's a sacred place. So you can't just come and just come and abuse it. You've got to come with respect and honour and gentleness. So I'm sorry to say, I'll keep repeating it, it was a, it was a terrible meeting. Were there many other local people in the meeting? And were the people invited in? Yes, there was few local people um, sitting in the meeting, and that was including me. We just we just came in through through the board to listen in. So there wasn't an um, open invitation for any Anangu people to come in and sit down and listen in. So it was basically a closed meeting. Were there any interpreters invited in to support your people so the constitutional recommendations of reform could be explained? Well, I didn't hear interpreters and I interpret lots and lots of meetings I've interpreted when I was working for Central Land Council as a field officer. So I didn't, I didn't hear one interpreter in the in at voyages there when they were talking. So nothing, no. So from the Referendum Council's First Nations Convention at Yulara, a working group called One Voice Uluru was formed as part of the process to take the Uluru Statement of the Heart forward. Were you or any of your people that you know of aware of this working group? Well, I didn't go into the room because everybody split up into, into the rooms and then they um, elected their people to be on the council. And I don't know how many people because I wasn't there. Yeah. So there would have had to have been a process to get permissions, obviously, to use the word, the naming of Uluru for the statement. Um, I want to move into... Well, I, I just want to comment on that. Yeah. I didn't hear any any talk at the conference to use the name Uluru at all, at any time. So at the closing ceremony, yourself and other members of, the, of your community and the local community there um, were dancing as a ceremony and that was when the actual statement, Uluru Statement from the Heart, was actually announced to the media. Was there any consultation or for, from there or any interpreting done for your people to understand in more detail the statement no, at that ceremony? Was, no, there wasn't. Yes, I was one of the dancers, one and only woman dancing, and I was dancing my chukurpa from my ancestors that come from west and that's the little one and I was dancing that and my uncle George was dancing as well the men dance in 1988 29 years ago you interpreted for the Anangu people at the Barunga festival when the 1988 statement was delivered to the Prime Minister Bob Hawke can you talk about that time and what that meant to you? Yes, I remember that quite clearly. I was there interpreting for, um, at the time, um, Prime Minister Bob Hawke. And he promised 
uh, repeated all his words. He promised that there will be a treaty with Aboriginal people and that he will get a group of people to go out to each community on the land to talk about it, to let Arnangu people know. Well, do you know what? That didn't happen. That is still standing. It's been taken away with the wind. It was just the talk, just the promise, as usual. So Aboriginal people get sweet-talking governments coming prom promising the world, but nothing happens, and we're still waiting from that day. So we might just go back to the, the beginning about you asking for the name of the Uluru Statement of the heart to be actually changed. You're not asking, you're not talking about any different process regarding recommendations. Do you think that one day in this, in your lifetime that you will see a treaty? Maybe. We have to say maybe because we don't know. Because we're too used to empty promises. So we just we just focusing on all the rules. Take this take the name off, don't use that. If the council want to go and pick a name and move on for their referendum constitution, go ahead, but leave our sacred land out of it. That's what my people were asking. I'm only a messenger, so like I keep saying, don't shoot the messenger. Ngaiyanya <laughs> Ngana na kuare Klaus Patino Klaim ka ngana na mukore ngani ngana pangura kili angana jago ngana na lawana ngana pangura ngana pachukur pa puli nyanga ngana ngani ka ana ngokujo biurango kulin jago mono wanting jago ngayo ko elders jodanga ala jiwanga I found call to do Jarango Manjin, I and ring him on his support him on it. Nunto Wanka Wanka Martito, Nanampa Wanka, Wanka Martito. I like you, I and Wangan, cut that's why I'll quarry. In IT being a Wangan, I'll ride the Anga Wanga Bay. Chutanga Anangu Wanka Ua Paya. Here it is. Bob Hawke and the Prime Minister Ninara, Prangala, Palor Wangamo. Hey, I know Juda. My Prime Minister, when you're in your quarry, support him and you're on the treaty in Aranjak. Treaty Pulga, you're on Banganjak. We were Juda Pagalian. Kangayo, Ian, the quarry. My you work on the Juda. Nura la Paranganjak, Mura Kuju Pukuju Banga, Wanganjak, and Nurala. Young Apollo and Palian Jaku, Monongayala got on Alacarinjak. Kangan and Angara Jonin. Kabalabal and Yaring Yaring Quarry, a reading room. We are, see this Walpa Walpa Yango cutting, Walpa warning. Munti promise Milan. Anna Jura Munti popular in Walto Jara Jota. Jota we are in Munti promise. Kangan and a quarry, poor crank on Yangani government. Mana na kuari purka ang kanya ni lead ang yuan na jura pa kanya nga yali alin ko sa namula mula ng kapayal ano ang jura kuari niya ni community nga widely crowded jura education health palabalum pa yan ang aji ni kapman ang kanya ni alpo milan jago 
their needs are big, they ask is big. But still, we are not. Kala yal ki kuare nyua na juda ko jungara jungo jungara jungo jungara jungo nyako. How are they gonna help us? Why should we support people? How are they gonna deliver? Because government never delivered it. It was all empty promises, still standing, got blown away in the wind, like I said. Sad, sad story. And a lot of many, many of my elders passed on waiting, hoping for a change. So they're asking now, how is everybody setting themselves up, whether it's new council or whoever, to speak on our behalf? And who's got, how are they going to get nominated? Who's going to represent us? So, they're saying, we don't trust anybody now. We want government. That's what I get all the time. To tell our Indigenous Affairs Minister, Nigel Scallion, come out, Minister. Come and sit down under the tree and listen to us what our needs are. You can take that one guy that talked to Canberra. They want to speak for themselves. Because we have prime ministers, we have anthropologists, we have lawyers, we have doctors. We got everything on the land. So I work for my black government. That's who I'm answerable to. And I speak my mind, and I speak strong, because I'm carrying their sad messages. Kundi, can you just please say again the message in language about asking for the name to be changed for the Uluru Statement of the Heart? Tana Japino, Uluru Nya, Uluru Statement of the Heart, we Jago. Ini wiyala, ini kuju bajora, nyura mba ini, nyura jora, nyanga ngulu wiyya. Nyanga ja mantra, puli nyanga ja sacred land. Mantra nyanga ja anang uku land. Palo lo ngulu jana pa ini. Ngana nanya wiyya charbu yung ngunjaku. Ngana mba wiyya wangkan jaku. Nyura jaku. I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm very happy that you're here and help me get the message. Thank you. Paulia, Auntie Alison Hunt, thank you so much for joining us, well, joining our program, but thank you so much for letting us come here today and really appreciate your time, Paulia. Yeah. Thank you. So it was, wasn't me brought you here. My people said it's, it's coming from my people. The owner, Murarija, of this wonderful sacred land of ours. What support do you need from your people to be able to stand here today? and to make this request for the Referendum Council, council to change the name of the Uluru Statement of the Heart? Well, I've got full consent, full support, and I'm honoured to have that because I am their voice and uh, I listen to what their need is and what their concern is. And they trust me to give that message out to the world, to Australia, to the people. And um, yeah, so I, like I said, I work for my black government and that's first and foremost. And that's why I'm here, proudly standing here, speaking on their behalf. And I have total 
100% support to do this. Thank you.